We're making this video because we know many drug users won't phone an ambulance when one of their mates overdose because we believe the police are gonna come flying through the door with the ambulance staff. You know how it feels when someone ODs. The panic, the fear that you might be held responsible, might be arrested or busted for any drugs you might have. The fear that they might die and a strong desire just to walk away. It is so important to make that call and save a life. That's all very well. What if I've got an outstanding warrant? What if I'm out of prison and licence? What if the police are after me? We won't know about any of that and we're not interested in all of that. Even if you're not happy to give us your name, we really need you to make that call. We just want to be able to get to the person who's overdosed quickly so we can treat them straight away. We won't call the police just for drug use. An overdose is a health matter, it's not a police matter. What if I'm carrying drugs? What if I'm dealing from my house? What if I prepared the gear or injected my mate who overdosed? We won't call the police for any of those reasons. All we're interested in is the safety of the person who has collapsed so that we can treat them as soon as possible and save that person's life. Acting quickly at this stage is vitally important if we want to keep that person alive. So what actually happens when someone does call 999 for an overdose? Ambulance emergency, do you have a postcode or address we can come to? The address is vital so we can immediately find the nearest ambulance to send to that address. Okay, and tell me exactly what the problem is, what's actually happened. This is important so we can plan how many vehicles to send. Is he awake? Yeah. Is he breathing? Yeah. This is important because your actions at this point can save the person's life. I will tell you what to do to keep someone's airway clear and keep them breathing. Okay, now can your friend be violent? This is important as we must protect staff and we cannot treat a patient efficiently in a violent situation as this could cause delay. Now we've organised help for him now. Stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. When there is a life-threatening situation, like an overdose, we like you to stay on the line until a paramedic arrives, so you can give first aid if needed. This can be life-saving and I can tell you exactly what to do. So, when would you call the police? Well, firstly, when we might be at risk of violence. For instance, when we know people have been violent or threatening towards ambulance staff before at a particular address, or when we're threatened when we're on duty. We have a right to be protected and a right to get to the patient as quickly as possible. Secondly, there may be occasions when we have to call social services. If we see children who are at risk or, or they have no one to look after them, we have a duty to protect children, as you would expect. And thirdly, if the caller tells us that someone has died, or when we arrive we find someone has died, we are obliged by law to tell the police. So, there are some occasions you would call the police? Yes, but only as I've described. Even if you're worried that the police might be called, we really want you to make that call. You don't have to give us your name. If you're so worried that you feel you cannot stay, you can call 999 and then leave the premises. But we don't want anything to get in your way. We really need you to make that call as soon as possible. So make that call, whatever the circumstances. Second save lives, make that call. We will only call the police if we are at risk, children are at risk, or someone has died. Make that call.